How's everybody doing today? I'm Pete here with Spawn Fly Fish. We're about to rock out a tiny little chum fry pattern. So hopefully this will get you excited to go fishing and, and obviously get ready for springtime and all that. But if there's any part of this video that's helpful, please remember to hit like and subscribe and you will be informed when there's any new video coming at you. Thanks everybody and, and hope you enjoy. All right, everybody. Today we're going to tie a nice little chum fry pattern and for the hook we're using the core hook and this is a size six and this style is uh, a little bit recognizable formerly uh, as a Daiichi 4647 so that's what we're going to be tying on for the bead we've, we're going to be using the model tax tactical slotted tungsten bead and this is just the the five thirty seconds inch um, black and so that's already slipped on before we put the hook in the vise. Let's go ahead and put some 0.015 non-lead wire wraps on there. We're going to use about 10 wraps. Like so. I'm going to cut both of these ends here. And round those cut edges just a little bit with my rounded scissors. And if you've watched any of my other videos, you know I'm a big fan of having a dedicated pair of scissors for cutting your wire. And that increases the longevity of your good, expensive scissors that you'll use for thread and smaller materials. So go ahead and just shove that wire into the back of the bead like such. And we'll get started here. We've got some Uni 6 aught olive. And get that started right behind our lead wraps there. Good. Trim off that tag end of your thread. And you can see we nicked that hook point just a touch, but we're okay. And now we're going to get up to these thread wraps or wire wraps and cover with thread. We're going to make a couple angled passes, 45 degree, and then we'll come on with some straight wraps and cinch all those wraps down. All right, let's get back to the end of the hook shank here, and then we're gonna come back toward the eye about two wraps. There's not a lot as far as difficulty. The only difficulty in this fly, you can see we, we don't have a lot of room to work with. And again, we're, we're tying a chum fry, which is a super small fly. So we're gonna get the most out of this, this shank for sure. And here, we're gonna start with four or five pieces of flash and nothing crazy. We're just gonna fold that over the thread like so. Grab both ends and as you come up, now we can just place that where we want it, keep it on the bottom of the hook shank on this one because again, it's a jig style hook. And just a couple wraps to get that really solidified and get our thread out of the way. And so for the length of the, this flash here, this will emulate some of our tail. We're looking at just shy of, of the, the shank length here. So go ahead and cut a little, a little, and a little. If you stagger these cuts, you, you don't end up with a square tail because there, there aren't too many species in nature that have square tails like this. All right, so now let's come to right behind where we, we finished our wire wraps. Let's go in for another five, six pieces of flash here. And you could absolutely use some other material, um, some saltwater flashaboo, anything like that would, would be fine. You could even use wire uh, to get a little more weight in there. All we're trying to do is, is give the illusion on the inside of that fly though, that there are scales and that nice shiny shimmery look that usually a small fry pattern is gonna have. All right, so now just pull these up. We're gonna wrap this back all the way to the curve of our shank here where we tied in those tail fibers. And if you get them stray, don't worry. We're, we're stretching this crystal flash as we wrap. So we'll lay pretty flat. And again, it, it, this doesn't have to be perfect because we're, we're gonna cover all this up as we tie the fly. One more, there we go. 
So I'm gonna get a couple of thread wraps here to catch all these crystal flash fibers. And once I've got that, I'm gonna pull them back and wrap down to right behind, again, where we finished our weighted wire wraps. Nice clean trim. One or two wraps to get that all wrapped down and we're good. So even right there, you can see we're, we're already starting to get some shape and, and life to this little fly. If there's one repeating theme in this fly, it's minimal, right? We want sparse materials. Um, it, next time you're in a river and you, you see some salmon in there, you know, come back. Whenever those, those eggs are hatching, you, you'll see these fry are very small, very slim. So this is the spawn semi seal in chum fry and even this is a little bit much for what we're trying to do we're just going to put a little bit of color on the the top right here and so i'm going to veil this material in so right where our thread's at behind those wire wraps let's go ahead and tie that on the top and just keep it right on top of the shank so there's three wraps get in there with your bodkin or whatever it might you might have and just kind of separate those fibers around both sides of the hook there and come in with the, the fibers that are over the eye and bring those all back toward the rear of the fly and tie down. So now we've got just a little bit of color going in there. And again, we're keeping this very sparse. So now what we're gonna do is grab a mallard flank feather. And this is nature spirit and they're natural uh, that's a little bit big for what we're trying to do. All we're looking for are some fibers that are gonna reach just to the end of the fly once we tie them in, so this will be a little bit better. And again, at the top of the feather, we're going to trim out the tip right there, and we'll use that as our tie-in space. So get your fibers even, trim out just the top, and go ahead and angle this and you'll get rid of some of these excess fibers. And just to make it easier on ourselves, let's go ahead and tie this in on the non-hook point side, on the bottom of the, the shank. And don't go real crazy on the pressure with your thread here because you will break that quill. Get it tied in, trim those tag end fibers, wrap all the way down, come back with a little more pressure and we're ready. As we wrap this feather, I'm gonna dip my fingers in some water and bring all these fibers facing toward the back. If you wrap this on the side, your fibers will stick out a little bit like an umbrella. But if we make this little move here, just slightly back first and then start to wrap, what we can do is control where we're wrapping this quill and you can see how tightly I can get those fibers to hug the body of the fly. Let's try that one more time. And as you see, we're looking at the inside flat portion of the quill on the concave side of the feather. And if you can wrap on that, it'll really keep these fibers in, under control and you won't have anything splayed. So about two full wraps is all we're gonna go for here. And the nice thing about using Mallard is it's got the, the nice uh, speckles on there already. And so it breaks up the pattern a little bit. And of course on, you know, small chum fry, any of your salmonid fry, you're, you're gonna have um, the beginning of par marks. So this will help to emulate that just a touch. All right, almost getting there here. We got almost the equivalent of the uh, bead width for our space left to, to finish this fly, which is fine. So now we're gonna switch to some olive bucktail. And this is probably going to be the most difficult part of, of what we do here with this fly today. Uh, if you were gonna count these fibers, I'd say you're, you're looking at a range of, of about 20, 25 at the very most, which sounds like a lot, but we're, we're talking about just the, the ends of some hairs here. So it's a really small amount. I'm not gonna even these out. I'm not gonna stack them. We're just gonna look for length that when these get folded back are gonna come down to the, the back of our fly. And we're gonna do this reverse style, which 
We're just going to tie it in over the hook eye. One gentle wrap just to place and another gentle wrap. And then let's get all these up and a little more pressure as we tie this down. I'm going to get rid of all the tag ends here and don't need them. And yeah, good. Now let's turn this over. A couple little things here. We're using some Marabou, and this is Fish Hunter Marabou Fluorescent Silver Dun UV. And we need roughly oh, five or six fibers. It's, it's a very sparse fly. Again, this, this is a, gonna be our working section here. I'll just peel those off the quill and go right underneath the fly and this will act as a little bit of a belly it'll give just a hint of movement as you're stripping this through the water even if you're not stripping it this is going to just provide a little bit of kick because so if you notice on especially fry right their bodies really aren't super big so there's not a lot of bend as, as though a trout were moving to to take something or eat so this doesn't have to have a ton of movement but a little subtle movement will help and now let's go back to this side and we're going to go back to the spawn semi sealed and the chum fry one more time and we're going to get roughly the same amount we did on our first first tie in and so when you think you have enough take about half of that and it'll be close and again we're going inside the bucktail we're just going to veil this back and it's just to get that that hint of of the olive tone on top Right, just match the natural a little bit. Great. And so at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and bring both the semi seal and our bucktail over and just be patient. If you have water sitting nearby, go ahead and get those fibers wet, pinch it back, and now thread is in front. And we're just gonna get one or two wraps of thread over that bucktail. We don't wanna we're not tying it like uh, Thunder Creek style or anything all the way back like that, but we just want to get it down. And now that we've got that tied in, we're back to the bottom side of our fly. And now just for that little bit of illusion in the, the front of a fry, where right behind the head, it is a little bit bigger than the rest of the taper in the body. So for this, we've got some semi seal and this is the starlight color and much like we did with the chum fry semi we're going to go very very small very sparse i like that amount right there and we're going to veil that underneath all right so two three good wraps four and bring that over get the thread in front and wrap down all right Looking pretty good so far. We've got one more element to add in here, and that is some peacock. So what this peacock is gonna do, and this is a eyed peacock stick from Hairline, but we're gonna add a dorsal color because the, the dorsal top, if you will, is always a little darker than the, the bottom, obviously, but the sides too, and so we, we're gonna have a nice progression from dark to a little bit of dark. And then medium and then light medium all the way to a light under side for our fly. What I'm going to do here is find three fibers and we're just going to use a little bit of it to get to the end of the fly. But we'll maintain the rest of the or the tag end and we're going to wrap that to make a little collar in there meeting up the fly. And of course, if you've ever fished with peacock, you know it's irresistible to fish. All right, and again, this part does not have to be perfect when you tie this in because once this is all wet and in the water, everything is gonna flow back and look just fine. So here's our three fibers right on top. Nothing crazy on pressure here. We just want those and there we go. So now we have our, our dorsal darker coloration tied in. And now I'm gonna bring these three fibers back and tie them in as though I were finishing a nymph or putting a, an abdomen, or excuse me, a thorax on a, a small fly. Like so, 
a little bit of moisture on the fingers again, and we will just spin these ever so gently, get a little rope of peacock out of our three pearls there. And we're just gonna wrap that forward. Ooh, and we're gonna break it off. Let's get three new peacock curls. I didn't like those anyway, they seem to have an attitude. Voila. Up near the tips here, leave about an inch and a half. Trim our tag ends, great. Like deja vu, here we have our three peacock curls. Just gonna gently spin those up again, and we're good. Two, looks like we'll get a nice third wrap in there. We're pretty full at that point. And since there's a little bit of a gap here at the back of that bead, I like to finish them on the underside when I'm tying these off. thread worked in there and two wraps in front and we can trim this out. Bingo. Do a little tidying right there. Great. And now a couple more thread wraps just to make sure everything is cinched down and exactly where we want it. And we'll come in with everybody's favorite whip finish. We're gonna do two whip finishes, four wraps per one, two, three, four. And the nice thing is we're slipping it off the back of that bead, so it's all going to just solidify all those materials that we've worked so hard to get in there. One, two, three, and four. Boom. And at this point, normally we'd go ahead and cement it, but I do want you to see how slim of a profile this fly has. If, if you've got it all, so I'm going to go off camera for just two seconds here and get it wet. And as you can see, we've got a nice little profile there of a chum fry. And this will absolutely slay anytime you see um, trout in the river after the salmon have been in, they're, they're coming to get the, the eggs and they'll sit behind them. And in the springtime or whenever there's a hatch, they're gonna be eating all the fry. It's an easy meal, a lot of protein, a little bit of fat, they can't pass it up. So anytime you've got salmon in the river, it's probably time to go ahead and start tying up those fry and get ready for everything that's gonna come after them to eat. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Again, my name is Pete and I'm here at Spawn Fly Fish. And if you've enjoyed, please hit like and subscribe and we'll see you soon.